Just before we start the show, can I ask you one thing? My whole show grows by word of mouth, so can you please go into your podcast app, give me a follow and a rating. I will be so grateful and it will help other people become aware of the show. Thank you so much. Welcome to Dreamers, Believers and High Achievers. My name is David C. Lee. Each episode, we bring you an inspiring person with an incredible message to help you turn your dreams into reality and unlock the high achiever within you. Thank you for spending some time with me today. And now off to the show. In this episode, I have the privilege of speaking with Mustafa Amar, the remarkable founder and CEO of The Passion MBA, a globally recognized coaching company out of New York. Mustafa's journey through various career paths within a single lifetime is nothing short of or inspiring. His initial passion for chemistry led him to a career as a pharmacist. However, he didn't stop there. His insatiable curiosity and desire to bridge cultural gaps led him to become an international diplomat, enabling him to travel the world and work in diverse locations, including China, Malawi, and the United Nations. But the story doesn't end there. Mustafa's next adventure saw him as an investment specialist at the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. In this role, he was tasked with spearheading business development efforts and attracting investments in regions spanning from Africa to the Middle East and Latin America. Under Mustafa's adept leadership, AIIB secured over 1.1 billion in investments for infrastructure projects in the Middle East alone. Mustafa's educational background is equally impressive. He holds a Master's of Business Administration with distinction from the prestigious Alliance Manchester Business School in the UK. In addition to his MBA, he possesses another Master's degree in Diplomatic Studies and Negotiations and a Bachelor of Arts degree in Pharmaceutical Sciences. This episode is a treasure trove of insights, inspiration and wisdom from a true visionary. And welcome to the show, Mustafa. Thank you so much, David. It's my pleasure uh, to be with you. And really looking forward to this conversation. Mustafa, you travel around the world quite often (laughs) from our (laughs) conversations that we've had. Uh, Can you tell us where you are now and and what you're up to? I'm right now in Italy, and uh, Italy is is a recent experience. I've been almost for uh, the whole year since uh, late last year. I'm here in Italy. And the main reason is I'm, um, I'm building a tech startup. Uh, we will come, of course, into details uh, <laughs> later in the, in the conversation. And Turin is a, a main tech hub in Europe and, and is the, the main tech hub in, in Italy as well. So I'm, I'm joining a startup incubator uh, here in Turin. And it's very interesting to be surrounded by other you know, startup founders who are really doing around, you know, doing the same things or pushing each other, supporting each other in many different ways. Uh, being in, in that space is very also inspiring. So I'm in this journey, which let's say in reincarnation vocabulary, it's my fifth life. So I'm, I'm starting <laughs> my fifth life right now. <laughs> <laughs> and we were getting that uh, a little bit later. Yeah, it is amazing, isn't it, Mustafa, that when you are with like-minded people, all in the same area, all working in the same sort of goals, how it's just so electric. There is so much charge in the air and uh, everyone just feeds off each other. Exactly. And it's something I learned when I wanted to change. Unless I try to find other like-minded people, people who are looking for almost same goals or similar goals, it's really hard to have it. So it's really hard to achieve that dream. So you really need to surround yourself, expand and extend your network to those people who are doing that thing, and then things get easier. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Well, Staffer, your achievements and experience are just phenomenal, as we're going to be finding out. Can you let us know a little bit about your journey up to where you are so far? <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Uh, yeah, I, I started my uh, career uh, as a pharmacist. I mean, as, as a teenager, mostly, mostly, we really don't know which uh, specialization we want to, you know, stick all our life in. And uh, in, in my case, it was a very hard question to, to answer. So I decided to stick to my passion at that time and to us chemistry. So I did uh, chemistry for, and pharmacy for five years. And uh, the moment I graduated, I knew pharmacy wasn't for me. So I, I had to, you know, dig deeper inside my old dreams to find another 
career. Uh, the answer was diplomacy, which was a, a bit weird. So for a fresh graduate pharmacist, and uh, I, I recall in my first um, uh, job interview, one of the questions is like, uh, where do you want to see yourself five years from now? And I, I say a diplomat. And uh, luckily enough, uh, my boss at that time didn't really hear. <laughs> he was busy with something else. <laughs> so, so, um, and then I have somebody else, like another colleagues of mine, just push me and say, no, 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 don't mention this. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my dream. Uh, five years from, from that time, I really wanted to see myself as a diplomat. It took me three years and a half working as a pharmacist and preparing myself to be a diplomat was a, a, a hell of a journey of, of changing and transforming my, myself, my skills, mm. and also exploring a lot of things about myself because uh, it's, again, very hard process. Luckily, uh, I became a diplomat after three years and a half. Uh-huh. Uh, my life changed uh, because as a diplomat, I was serving my country, Egypt. Uh, I, I get to travel a lot. I get to also serve my country in other uh, countries or organizations. So I work in Malawi in Africa, also work in New York at the United Nations for two short missions, and, and then in China. Um, and in China, somehow, um, after 10 years of diplomacy, I reached the peak of my career. And this is how I thought by the end of my posting in China is that I think it's hard for me to achieve something beyond what I achieved. So I was looking for another answer, like, okay, where, where I can see myself next? And the answer came into in investment banking. So I moved to a multinational uh, development bank, which is headquartered in China. Uh, it's very similar to the World Bank, was launched in 2016. And luckily, that was the year I joined the bank. So I joined a multinational bank in the first year of operation. So it was a, a great experience for me. You get to do something completely different. I was an investment officer, so I had to work on uh, business development, bringing investments and in infrastructure uh, in, in different markets. So I was uh, supervising markets from Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, all the way to the Middle East and Latin America as well. I decided to do my MBA during those four years. Uh, I did it in Manchester in the UK. And I thought I was doing my MBA to grow more in my career uh, in, in, in banking. Uh, but somehow, you know, doing an MBA is like you're exploring different possibilities of yourself, uh, studying different subjects. So somehow this opened up other doors. And um, in 2020, I started a coaching business and things moved on. Uh, I, I wrote my book, Time to Move On. And things move on to my fifth life, which is right now. Uh, so I saw the coaching business in the last three years was going well. I was able to help dozens or hundreds of people in many different ways. And I thought there must be a way to scale that service. Having in mind that there are a lot of people are suffering from being stuck in a career they don't like. I'm sure you heard of the great resignation, quite quitting and many other economic trends, right? Mm. Um, and this is how I ended up starting my fifth life. Uh, while, of course, I'm I'm still doing my coaching and writing books. Well, talk about pivoting. <laughs> 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 Mustafa, most people would be absolutely delighted in just one of your careers, one of your segments, one of your career paths. You have to break it down, how you actually succeeded in pivoting so many times. Yeah. And also, though, really competitive industries. Can you tell us a little bit how you did it? Because none of them really have a connection. <laughs> it's yeah, I, it's really hard, and it's it's never. It was never in my mind that I would go through the whole journey as I described uh, now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's go to the first uh, pivot uh, because I think that was the hardest for me. Uh, you're just graduating, you don't have experience, you don't have enough experience in the market, and then you know the first thing you want to do, rather than them building experience, is to pivot and and change your career. In diplomacy, in majority of countries, diplomacy is is a very high niche market where very selectively, uh, you know, foreign uh, ministries, you know, select uh, diplomats. So it's it's a national competition. It happens once every year or two, and uh, almost two thousand plus uh, contestants, you know, they apply. At the end, they take twenty or thirty. So I have almost. 
no chance to <laughs> to be a diplomat. <laughs> oh, I knew that. I knew that I have almost no chance, um, especially that when I started talking to people around me that, okay, this is my dream and I think I I will try to, to, to do it. And, uh, you know, when you receive discouraging comments from people around you, they say, oh, but no, it's hard. You, you cannot do that. Um, you're a pharmacist. What, what do you know about diplomacy or <laughs> politics or economics? <laughs> um, it, was, it was so hard. But I think what was very crucial for me and made me, you know, go against the, 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 the stream, if I would say, uh, the current is I spend a bit of time on what I can call the orientation process. Okay. Um, so I, I, I spend time on reflecting. I spend time on deciding. It took me a bit a bit uh, of time. So by the last semester in pharmacy in, in, in the school, I, I knew that I, I, I wouldn't do this. And if I work as a pharmacist for some time, that's not uh, uh, forever. And then I, I spend a bit of time on, on knowing more if, if this is a passion for me, being a diplomat, if it's something that would excite me, uh, if serving my country would be a, a thing that I would aspire for, or if traveling around the world is something I love. And I really love traveling, and, and it's, it's, my, it's my blood. Um, Which is evident to... by, the, by, your, by your traveling now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I, I used to travel with my parents since I was one year old. Okay, so it's really in your blood. It, exactly. And somehow I, I saw that's okay, that's part of my life. Uh, if I keep traveling the world, serving my country in other countries, uh, um, that's interesting. Also, also, trying to connect your career with a purpose, I think, is crucial. Um, and in, in my case at that time, I, I connected the idea of being a diplomat to serving my country. And, and representing my culture in the best possible way. And that actually, you know, was, was the fuel when, when you are in tough time, when you are preparing for exams, and when you fail, because I failed in the middle, um, mm-hmm. and attacks come, you know, people attack you harsher than ever because they say, oh, we told you, uh, you will never be able to achieve that. So it, let's say in, a, in a, the most simplistic way, the orientation part, is a key. If you know that this is for you, you're going to fight for it. If you can connect that to a, a bigger purpose in life, it also can, you know, fuel your, you know, you know, your grit to fight for it. And I think this is a key. Without that, it's not easy. <laughs> I think so many people that do pivot and, uh, and do go on to be successful in, uh, in changing careers, they really take heed of the naysayers and use it as fuel. <laughs> so yes, exactly. to, most, to most people, well, not most people, I'll, I'll retract that, to a lot of people saying no to something is like a, a red rag and bull. It is like, no, I, I'm really going to dig in now and keep doing what I said I was going to do. So you can use that as fuel, definitely, definitely. I agree, 100%. <laughs> Changing careers is, is, is daunting. We all know that it is daunting. Can you tell us some of the common mistakes that people make when they do start to transition careers? Yeah, there, there are a lot of them. And um, I was, there was a, uh, an interesting ebook, a very short one I wrote in, in the beginning about those mistakes. And I would say one of them is not doing the orientation, as we spoke earlier. It's like not doing your homework. Because, and I have, I've seen this a lot. I've seen people accepting the first job offer they get into it. A recent connection, somebody I know for, for some a uh, couple of years. And once she finished her MBA, she just accepted the first job offer. And um, she was moving from engineering to retail banking. And I talked her, I talked to her like I think four or five months after she got her her new job, and she said, most probably in, in five, six more months, and I will be out of this. And she said, I was lazy enough to, you know, to do a bit of research about myself, what I really like, and I was uh, lazy just to accept what I, I, I got. So it's not about accepting what you get. It's about you knowing what you want, and then go out there and find it. And if you cannot find it, create it. Um, I, I see this as a, a, a common mistake. 
I, th I think a second mistake would be not researching inside your organization as well, because mm -hmm. you may have a chance or an opportunity inside your organization to change career. And, and that would be an easier uh, or a smoother way to pivot, right? Um, let's let's say, for example, in, in, in banking, I was an investment operation for some time. If I wanted to change, why not? I would just explore the strategy or the policy department mm. or, you know. So look inside your organization. If you still see that, you know, it matches your values, you still see yourself working there, but then you are bored or you are done with what you are doing and you want to explore something else. So this is also another mistake, not looking inside your organization. You also help executives and business professionals pivot to new careers. That's part of your uh, part of your passion at the, the Passion MBA. Yeah. You, yeah. you use a blueprint to help them through that and you maintain a high compensation for them. Uh, you create their next big career opportunity. Yeah. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? Sure, sure. I mean, the, the main idea is, I'm, I mean, I built the whole methodology. It was based on my practical experiences. And uh, when, I, when I started laying out those foundations and, and, you know, deciding the methodology, I went back to every single step I did in my career pivots. And I sometimes, you know, when you do this in the beginning, especially, it's very unintentional. You know, when I, I was just starting as a pharmacist, I want to be a diplomat, very unintentionally doing things or trying different things. Uh, but then you get better at this uh, every every time you, you pivot. Yeah. So my methodology, I call it the passion uh, blueprint. And um, le let's, let's imagine uh, if we are driving uh, a car together uh, for a s thousands of miles. I, I assume if it's for a thousand miles, it will take maybe uh, a few days along the journey. We need three essential elements to reach to our destination. The first one is enough gas for the car. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the second is a GPS. And the third, we need a final destination. Uh, we need to know where are we heading, right? Mm. And without enough gas, we'll stop somewhere in the middle. We'll never reach our destination. On the other side, if you don't have a GPS with you, you'll get lost dozens, hundreds of times in the middle. Maybe you'll never be able, right, to get to your destination, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. And a final destination is is necessary if if you have a GPS. You really need to put down, write down a final address because there is no use of having a GPS unless you write write down yeah. a final yeah. address. So let's apply this on our life or our career. Uh, enough gas means enough passion for whatever mm -hmm. you're doing. Our passion mm -hmm. is is the gas that really fuel your life, your career, and you know keep you passionate, inspired, and obsessed about doing things yes, and achieving yes. things. And I, I see people in in several situations they run out of gas, but they don't know they are lacking passion for whatever they're doing. And it has many manifestations. For example, somebody is burnout. Yeah, and you don't know why they're burnout. They didn't even could see the signs of burnout earlier, so they could mm. try to mitigate that or even have uh, a hedging plan to pivot, uh, you know, somewhere down the road. Um, yes. So it has many manifestations, and and once you lack passion, you don't have gas, you will stop, you run out of gas. Um, the the GPS is your values. We have our personal values, we have our societal values, and. It is very crucial to dig deeper to know your values. And our values sometimes change over time. I'll just give an example. Sometimes family is not number one as a value, but at a certain point in life, uh, family becomes uh, on your, you know, the, the top of the list of, of your values, right? So if you work in a career or a job that doesn't satisfy those core values, you'll get lost as per the car analog. So you get lost in the middle. So you really need to know your core values and need to make sure that any career you work on, you're passionate on, and also satisfy that value. And I, um, the end destination or the, the final address is an ideal lifestyle. So majority of people also don't imagine, don't spend time on visualizing what's their ideal lifestyle, you know? No, they don't. They don't, and it's so sad. 
And exactly. And and when I, I talk to a lot of people on this, and I, some somehow when we start doing this exercise, people edit their dreams. They they write something and then oh no 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 it's too big for me, and then they they cut it right become satisfied but they're not really satisfied they think that by being satisfied that it's going to be easy on themselves they don't have to push themselves they don't have to exceed themselves exactly so the idea here is not to edit your dreams and subconsciously a lot of people doing this because the way we were programmed whether in society or family or upbringing or whatever uh, we are pushed to specialize in one career all our life so there are many many reasons we pushed not to believe in our dreams. And uh, sometimes, you know, you get inspired by an idea just in order for you to realize it, to achieve it. And even if it's so big, even if it's a big dream, you cannot, you, you shouldn't edit. You just keep it as it is. So what we normally do in, in that methodology, if you know your top passions, top five, for example, and if you know your core values, three to five, then you have an idea lifestyle and imagine those are three circles. They will definitely intersect somewhere in the middle. And this is exactly where you want to be in the next few years at least. So when you do this, this is what I mean by orientation. When you do this properly, you know the passions that you are passionate about right now. You know your values so you, you cannot endanger them. And then you know there is a destination that you should arrive a few years from now. And then... It's an amazing life if you are trying every single day, spending time your passion, satisfying your values, getting closer to your dream lifestyle. Even if you're ha- halfway through, um, you're not fully there. So this is somehow what, what I'm doing. And then, of course, we can jump into the plan because also I'm trying to hitch against the risk. So you really need to have a plan before jumping out and, and trying to swim in the ocean. So uh, we, we help to have a six-month program of, of planning, learning the skills needed, you know, uh, building a new network in the new space that you're looking at and, and many other tactics. There's so many parts to the puzzle and, you know, you've really explained them so that, you know, there is a plan, there's a blueprint, as you say. Exactly. Exactly. Because passion is is an interesting topic and is, I think, is misunderstood and sometimes misguided by people. And I see different opinions around that. And I, I see people sometimes discouraging you from finding your passion. Uh, hmm. Recently, I heard one of top influencers talking about passion is uh, for amateurs, which I claim I know enough about passion to be expert in passion because I've been following my passions all the time. And I I still claim that if you don't have passion for whatever you're doing, you're running out of gas, you're stopping somewhere in the middle, and you're lost. So also, passion is not enough. You need a blueprint for that passion, as we were talking right now. Well, the blueprint is really equates to action. Exactly. Thinking and, and having passion on something is it's it's not a dream, it's a nightmare because you're never really going to achieve it because... <laughs> <laughs> you, you can sit in your room, you can lay on your bed thinking, I want X. But if you don't start taking action to get to X and achieve X, then it's just going to be a dream that's never, exactly. going, to, uh, it's never going to be real. It's a really good way to become miserable, I think, is to have a dream and not follow it. It's just It's just crazy. And also, as you said as well, it's also crazy to have a dream and not plan the route, plan the, the, the journey to get there. Just to dive in is just a ridiculous thing as well. Yeah, yeah. I- imagining life uh, on two sides. One side is uh, somebody has a dream but never tried to, to achieve that, how he or she would, would feel. And the regrets that were staying in and would you know, sink in for a long, long time until the last day in their life. And imagine on the other side, somebody at least tried, right? And and just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and then exploring different things about his or her uh, life and potential. Imagine being on your deathbed and having so many regrets that you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you didn't do that. Yeah, it's a a very sad uh, sad ending. But moving on to something a little bit more brighter, (laughs) you also help existing businesses to expand to the next level through your coaching as well. What are some of the things you look at there? 
Well, also it's it's part of it is using uh, the same methodology because also I've seen a lot of people want to build a business and and um, again the same idea if if you don't know why you are building this business because also building a business is not easy. <laughs> It's even no. more challenging than just going uh, out and getting whatever job you settle in. Um, so it requires you to learn a lot of things and, and also uh, running a business, building your team, finding the, the right hires, uh, scaling that business. All of these are challenges. So unless you know exactly uh, why you are doing this, why this type of business, and make sure that this is the right business for you, that the right type of business for you, it's, it's really hard. But if you go through that similar process and make sure this is the right business for you, things get very interesting. And I'll, I'll just give you an example. One of my clients, uh, he worked all his life in the legal space. So he, he moved from you know, being a, a judge to uh, the corporate world to work in different companies across different regions and, and somehow explored that space to the maximum, and, and really he wanted to change. So when we did together that process, somehow, they, very interestingly and oddly enough, the dream career that he, or the dream business that uh, the process showed is building a platform for agribusiness, so for agriculture. Very interesting. So he doesn't have an experience in agriculture. Well, well. <laughs> very interesting. But then when you dig deeper in every single tunnel of this process, when you look at his passions, you will find it there. You will find agriculture there somewhere, uh, farming, you will find it there. But when he started allowing himself to think of his passions and, and write and journal about each one of them, we got to know that. And then it again touched in his values. If, for example, in his values, being healthy, eating organic food is, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is is another thing. And then slowly, slowly, we find it almost everywhere. So when we started the transformation process, okay, where are we getting to? We had two business ideas. One, still in the legal space, is to build a recruiting agency in the legal space, uh, using his strength and expertise in that market. And then on the other side, the platform that we were talking about on the uh, agribusiness. So, and I, I, I told him, you have three or four weeks to explore both. And you by yourself will decide which one. I had, um, my intuition was telling me which one he's going to choose. Um, and then, yeah, after three or four weeks, it was obvious that he has more passion for the agribusiness. He's learning much more uh, over there. He's building his expertise. He's uh, building network. He's doing surveys. So that's the beauty of that process is that sometimes it shows you where are you heading in terms of uh, what type of business uh, you want to build. Mm, it's interesting, isn't it? And it's interesting from an outside perspective. There are many people out there that are achieving what to the outside world are, are incredible businesses or incredible careers. And the person behind the career or the business is manifestly unhappy. You find that once they do that, once they do pivot and they find their passion, then they get a new zest for life and uh, they, they bounce out of bed ready to go instead of just crawling out of bed and thinking another day. It's amazing, yeah. isn't it? How just that pivot, that same very same person can change dramatically in yeah. uh, their zest for life by finding their passion and pursuing their passion. Exactly. And, and imagine a life where. You're stuck somewhere, your career already plateaued, so you don't see much growth happening there. Not see, you cannot see much learning and growth happening there. And then on the other side, when you find something you're passionate about and then you're starting to learning again and relearning and then growing, this is where you see yourself you know, inspired to do more. Also connecting that with an impact is also great. Mm, exactly. You've uh, written a, a couple of books. One of them is called The Passion Project, Build the Career You Were Born to Have and Find Your Life Purpose. Exactly what we've been speaking about uh, in, in the last few minutes. Can you give us a sneak peek about what that book's about? Sure. So I, I, I wrote two books, uh, The Passion mm-hmm. Project and Time to Move On. And, and what happened exactly is The Passion Project was my first book. I almost finished the book. And it was ready to be published. But somehow the conversation I was having with uh, clients, with people, I always like to get feedback. 
I saw that they really were looking for an, another type of a conversation, which is before you tell us how to build our dream career, let's have an earlier conversation around the Smith that we believe in, or for them, it's like the type of convictions. And we need to bust before we move on uh, into the next dream career. And, and this is how I ended up putting the passion project aside for a while and then writing another book, which is time to move on. And it went out, uh, it's in the market since uh, this uh, April uh, this year. And in, in time to move on, I'm talking about the seven career myth that people should bust before finding the dream career. And, and somehow I saw that very essential, like it's essential to have that conversation with people on those convictions, stuff that people believe in, and they are not, you know, they are, they are myth. And they can start asking the next question, okay, now we, now we know how we can find our dream career. So yeah, for, for time to move on, I, I spoke about myth like one of my favorite myth is uh, the supreme specialist. So mostly we grow up in school and, you know, our uh, family surroundings, every single environment, we learn that the only way to succeed in life is by specializing in one career, sticking to that industry or that domain all our life, getting promoted there. And this is the only way to succeed in life. And I'm proving that this is a myth. There is many other ways to find success in life, including what I call career shape shifting. And I, I see career shape shifting as the future of work, uh, having in mind, for example, AI, machine learning, technological advancement in general. It's going to change a lot in, in our uh, future of work. So, it's expected that millions of jobs would disappear or, or transform in many different ways. Um, so the answer to that, if you're a specialized in one tiny specialization and your job goes extinct, what would you do? Uh, the answer from my perspective is career ship shifting. If you are a career ship shifter, like let, let's imagine koala as an animal in the animal kingdom is a specialist animal. Uh, and koala eat a specific type of food, uh, only eucalyptus, right, leaves. Koala lives in, in a very specific type of environment. If the weather change a bit, it's in danger. And, and this is actually what we're always talking about, that koalas are always in danger, you know, to go extinct, right? Hmm. And, and let's imagine on the other side, another animal, raccoon. Uh, and yes. raccoon is a generalist animal or a shapeshifter, if I would like to call. Yeah. Um, so is able to eat anything, anything mm -hmm. literally. Is able mm -hmm. to live in different environments. You know, it is yes. From the U.S. to Australia, the very cold to you know snowy weather, very harsh conditions, and um, and also is able to you know if if there is a change that is hitting the environment. They have a bit of skills in terms of problem solving. So they can open a can, they can, you know, break a door, they can do different things. So compare both of them and apply that on us, you know, specialist versus a shapeshifter. Which one would survive when the future change and, and you know, hits? Uh, I claim uh, shapeshifting is the future of work. Oh, it is. And as you mentioned, Mustafa, you've got... Um... AI, machine learning, so many jobs are going to be uh, teetering on extinction or they're going to be reduced because of AI. And then obviously more jobs will be created because of AI. So yeah, you've got to be, uh, you've got to be fluid and, uh, and a shapeshifter, as you said. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. You've got to have that open-mindedness, that uh, open mindset to be able to, to learn and, and be a lifelong learner. Agree, agree. And that's what it really inspired me to have this conversation earlier, because I think it's very helpful to start debunking some of this myth, including the Supreme Specialist myth, including, for example, it's too late to change. Uh, that's one <laughs> of the myths. A lot of people say, oh, I would love to change, but it's too late for me. Uh, so I'm also proving that this is a myth. And I'm showing stories of people who are in their late 60s and 70s who were still able to, to change in many different ways. Uh, somebody would say, oh, yeah, but I invested a lot in this career. And if I leave to a new place, I'm starting from scratch. 
and, and I'm showing and proving that when you move to the new career, you're not leaving every everything behind you. You are taking actually your skills with you. You're taking your experiences. And I'm proving this in both ways, talking to you know your right part of the brain, your left right of the brain, through whether through stories or data or research. So I think this is an essential conversation to have with audience uh, before we say, okay, let's find our dream career. Yeah, that's right. Well, you, your dream career of tomorrow could not be uh, even a career tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you've always got to have that, uh, that open-mindedness, always, always be open-minded and uh, be prepared to change. Exactly. <laughs> Mustafa, you're the CEO of Passion MBA. As you mentioned, it's a global coaching company based out of New York City. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that does? Yeah, I mean, the, the Passion MBA is, is, is a company that I created in 2020 when I left banking. And the idea was to share the knowledge that I had in my life, that really uh, all those knowledge, values I lived my life with and for, they really transform my life. And the idea here was to use that to help people also to find their dream career. It was in, 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 in the beginning of the pandemic. So I was somehow forecasting and, and foreseeing what would happen in terms of people quitting their jobs. I, I've been through this. I was early in the pandemic time. I was like, OK, I think it's it's the time also for me to leave banking and start things on my own and and have an impact from another angle. And luckily, luckily, uh, because I, I think there are a lot of things depend on many, like the success depends on, on many things. Uh, your intention, if your intention is good, um, uh, I think that would that would help a lot. <laughs> uh, that's that's one part. Uh, link that with a with adding value to people and and helping them to transform their life. It's really a great feeling when I receive a comment from somebody who read the book or somebody who did. Uh, um, uh, coaching with me and somebody say for example uh, that first call that um, that I scheduled was the best decision in my life when I hear something like this uh, yeah. it, it's a it's a great feeling so uh, doing that for the last few years and then also uh, as as a coach who started in 2020 I'm also learning a lot as a coach so I decided also to learn from the best in this so uh, people like Jack Canfield He's number one success coach in, in the world and is uh, New York Times bestselling author. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, and he has his own trainer trainer uh, coaching program. It takes more than a year to you know to learn and get certified in success principles. So it also is one of my mentors. I learn a lot from him in in this regard. And uh, I feel lucky being close to him. He also wrote the foreword of my book, uh, Time to Move On a lot of support also he has a lot of coaching programs and and he has thousands of coaches certified uh, mm -hmm. in his coaching methodology but i feel very lucky that i got chosen in two coaching programs to coach with him one is a game changer it's um, mm -hmm. it's uh, it was happening over the last six months so in game changer we help people to change their life over the course of six months whether on career level whether on and specific aspect of life whether it's personal or so and uh, next month he has a, his one of his signature programs uh, breakthrough to success bts and it's happening in uh, in los angeles in newport beach so also uh, to to be with him coaching hundreds of uh, of people it's a great great experience also for me it's a good it's a good sign that things are going on the right uh, track having said that when you see that there are potential to help more people, especially that we talked earlier, the problem of the great resignation or, or quite quitting, millions of people every year are quitting their jobs. I think the solution must be bigger than what we all trying to do or achieve. So I thought of, why not? You start your fifth career, or at least try to start. <laughs> <laughs> and that's in the tech space. And the idea here, if you can translate all of this service that you're doing, whether on one-to-one -one basis or a small group coaching, if you can translate that and scale that into a platform that can help mm -hmm. thousands or hundreds of thousands or even more, uh, 
uh, that will definitely benefit much more people. And and the idea here is is really to serve as 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 many uh, people. So this is where I am right now: is is mm-hmm. moving that service into what I can call shapeshifter. So helping may, as many people to shapeshift. <laughs> yes, and, yes, yes. In their career and, and and their life. One of the things that you mentioned, Mustafa, was the fact that you sought out the best and you should sort out Jack Canfield and the rest is history with him and you doing a lot of uh, ongoing work with him. I think it's really important for anybody who's looking at improving their life. There is so many things that people say about coaching, you know, the old LeBron James has a coach, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but breaking it down, why, why would you want to go down a certain path in life and discover everything as you're going along? It's going to take a long time. It's going to take years. There's going to be a lot of skin to knees. There's going to be a lot of tears. Yeah. Why not just tap into someone who has been there, someone who has that knowledge? And yeah, coaching is, is one of the ways that we can do that. Coaches all the way out there. And yeah. also the way that people are looking at improving their life can hook into a coach and they're going to fast track their success. Simple yeah. as that. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. I've absolutely loved our conversation. Unbelievable. I love your story. I really do. Well, Stafford, what drives you and keeps you focused? You, you're look, now looking at your, your fifth career or your fifth pivot. What keeps you focused? What keeps you working at such an incredibly high level? Well, I, th- that's a great question. And I, I think if, if you ask me in, in different lives of my, <laughs> my career life, I would, I would answer different answers. Uh, mm-hmm. But then also, it's always good to find something. And if, if you ask me right now, what, what drive me? Trying to change people's life and, and transforming their life. Uh, and I, I've been there. I, I, I remember and I always recall my feeling when I was stuck in a career that I didn't like. And I was trying to find a way to, to get to a dream career or also trying to find a you know, some helping hands, some to, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and I couldn't because uh, that type of what I really wanted to offer wasn't there. And then seeing the impact that you have on people. And and, and that's why, for example, that's one of the main reasons why I'm, I'm building this uh, tech startup, because I could be fine uh, scaling my career, my coaching service in a very traditional way. Uh, you're going to enjoy your life, work from wherever you want, keep traveling the world. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and that's fine. But also, when I look at numbers, I, 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 I found that I cannot serve them more, more than 120 to 150 every year. And that's l- much lower than what I really dream to, you know, to, to serve. So, if, if you ask me what really drives me, if I can see one million people, uh, their life change because of, of that service, that will be a, a great feeling for me. Plus, another thing is, is I have a lot of uh, passion for uh, a charity cause, um, especially related to orphans. Somehow, uh, when I start, when I was 15 years old, I started to have that passion. So I was, I was giving from my pocket money to orphan causes, you know helping orphans, supporting their education. And the more I gave, the more life gave me back. Oh, absolutely. And then, uh, the more I grow again I, and I give more, the more life gave me back. So it, it, in a way that really, you know, struck me. So when I moved to coaching and I, when I, uh, I'm starting doing all of this, uh, my dream is getting bigger with this. So if you ask me right now what's really motivate me, I would say a big dream, hopefully by 2030, I have one million orphans. Me, my team, my organization help them to dream about their life. Uh, the age between 12 to 18 is a very critical age, especially in, you know, in orphans. Uh, it's hard to find an environment that support them and tell them that they can dream and, and they can dream big. And if I can do that, whether from my time, money, anything I can do, uh, that would be very helpful. That's why, for example, one dollar from every copy sold of Time to Move On, and also the future books is going to hopefully to be allocated to achieve that dream. And I, I think if I if I can achieve that dream, that's uh, for me that's the most important thing in, <laughs> for me in the coming few years. Mustafa, judging from your past, I'm pretty sure you're a good bet to uh, to achieve that. Uh, I hope so. Thank you, David. I really hope so. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. I hope so. Wrapping up, 
Can you tell us one piece of advice or resource that you can give to us and where can we find out more about you and, and your work? Sure. So I think very, very two pe short pieces of advice for people. Uh, the first thing is always when you achieve something and uh, you celebrate the twin and then you feel things are plateauing, ask yourself this question all the time, what's next? When you program yourself, your subconscious to ask what's next, you are doomed to achieve much more. So it's, of course, nice to celebrate, you know, your wins, enjoy, but then don't stay there. Don't, stuck, don't be stuck there for long. The second piece of advice, you don't need to prove anything to anybody uh, because I, I see people are stuck in how people are viewing them, how, you know, family circles, friends are, will look at them, where, whether they will ridicule them if they try to achieve their dreams. So you don't have anything to prove to everybody, anybody. You just need to follow your goals, follow your dreams. And, and that's a great feeling. If you just remove the hassle thinking of what people will view me, what people will think of me. Also, I don't need to prove anything. If, if I fail, I fail. It's okay. Then you reduce a lot of pressure from your shoulder. And to, to answer your second question, I have my two websites, mustafaamar.com. M-U-S-D-A-F-A, Amar, A-M-M-A-R.com. And they can find an excerpt from, from the book uh, there. Also, it's, it's oh, uh, perfect, good to perfect. read, uh, you know, a, a part of it. Mm -hmm. and, and also all my services there. And also the passionmba.com, which is the, the other website. Perfect. Thank you so much, David. I really enjoyed our conversation and how natural it was. Really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Not a problem at all. Very easy yeah. conversation, which is which is always wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll have uh, some of the links to some of the staff's resources, as well as some of the value gems he shared today on the show notes page of, for this episode, as I mentioned. Thank you so much, Mustafa. Thank you so much. Friends, we all have a choice, success or excuses. It's clearly your decision. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Dreamers, Believers, and High Achievers. We hope you found today's discussion impactful. To help support the show and allow us to reach as many people as possible, we'd love if you could pass this along to at least two friends or family members to help them achieve greatness in their own lives. You can also visit davidclee.com for more information and resources to help you take your life to new heights, as well as connect with David directly on social media 